everybody. I am a mom and a scientist, mostly a theor theoretical physicist and a storm chaser. And I will talk today about storms and hurricanes. Why are they so important? How I study them? Why I think that I have the best job in the world? And why I love my life? Now, as an undergraduate student at the University of Zagreb, I fell in love with the physics of the atmosphere. The science of weather, for me, combined the best of physics and the best of math. And believe it or not, I really loved physics and I really loved math. Now, the equations that describe our atmosphere are the same equations that the theory of chaos was discovered on. And now, according to the theory of chaos, or also known as a butterfly effect, if a butterfly flaps its wings somewhere in Croatia, a hurricane might form somewhere around Florida or North Carolina. Now, as an undergraduate student, I also very often sat with my friends, you know, we would have coffee, one of the most important, or one of, yeah, one of, not the most, important rituals that we have. And we would talk about politics, soccer, weather forecasts, or horoscopes. And it seemed to me that many of my friends thought, and some still think, that the, the chances that they will meet a cute boy or a cute girl, because that's in their horoscope, are the same as that it will rain according to the weather forecast. Now, is that really so? There are two most important things that go into weather forecasts. One is our understanding of the physics of the atmosphere, and the other is the data, the measurements that we have. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we do have now. So we're going to think about our planet's atmosphere as a sum of many puzzles. Each puzzle here represents our knowledge of the physics of the atmosphere. If we had all the puzzles, that would mean that we know all the physics of the atmosphere. Okay, so first we are going to look at the tropics. Just focus on the tropics and on all the puzzles that flew away. Those puzzles represent physics that we do not know. The ones that remain represent physics that we do know. Now, if we combine that with the whole planet, we are left with this image. And this image tells us that more than 50% of the physics of the atmosphere we still don't know. And now, as we said, that there are two things that go into weather forecasts, one the physics and one the data. Let's look at how the data looks like when it comes to our planet. All right, in red, we see the points where we have data, where we have the measurements. And you can see that in many areas we have lots of data, and in many areas we have none. Now, if we were to overlap this image with the image of the physics puzzle, this is what we get. The area where we have the least knowledge, where, where our understanding of the physics of the atmosphere is the least, is the same area where we have the least amount of measurements. Now, this is the area of tropics, in particular over the ocean. And now that makes working in the tropics a real hardship, I gotta admit, but somebody has to do it. Now, you may, you may ask, you know, why do I care? I live in a part of the world where we have all the puzzles, or most of them, at least. I live in Zagreb, or London, or Seattle. It rains there all the time anyway. But the weather doesn't know of borders. It's connected. It flows together. So if you want to know a fairly accurate weather forecast for Zagreb for day three or four, you need to know what's happening in the tropics. If you want to have an accurate climate prediction for the next decade or further, you need to know what's happening in the whole planet. So do we care? Do you care? Well, of course you care. You want to know if you can barbecue next weekend. The farmer wants to know when to irrigate. A fireman wants to know when is the rain coming. An engineer wants to know where to put the solar panels. And the doctor wants to know what exotic diseases we will be facing tomorrow. Our economy and our health depend on weather and climate forecasts. 
All right, so we care. I hope I convinced you. We care. So what are we going to do about it? How are we going to figure out those puzzles that are missing? What is the physics of the tropics? So here we are looking at one storm represented by a cumulonimbus cloud, and we are also looking at the storm that turned into a hurricane. This is its inner wall and its eye. Now why would a particular storm turn into a hurricane and the other one wouldn't, if all the conditions are the same? How can we figure that out? To do that, we need data. But remember, we don't have much data in the tropics. But data is our best friend, so we have to do something about it. So what we do is we conduct field projects, fly aboard research planes into the storms and hurricanes. Now, I've been flying on research planes since my graduate years. And my first flight completely changed the way that I thought about my work. Instead of sitting you know, in my office and scribbling down the equations on a piece of paper, I actually got to see what I'm studying. I got to see those clouds that I used to daydream under, how they move, how they modify and transform. And I got to see that from research planes that were equipped with all these instruments that were measuring data, radars, lidars, drop zones. I got to see when we would drop a zone from 15 kilometers, I got to see in real time the data that it was measuring as it was traveling down to the surface of the ocean. And then I got to process that data and look if my hypotheses are making any sense. I was hooked for life. Now, Flying on weather missions can be very complex and thrilling. When we are on a field project, these planes become our home, and they literally look like you have stepped into a factory. Figuring out when and where to fly is very tricky because our weather forecasts are very inaccurate. And then there are many safety issues that we face. Before every flight, we have safety briefing, okay? And we are told, we the scientists are told, we are very stubborn creatures, by the way, we are told that when we are told to sit down and buckle up, we better sit down and buckle up, no questions asked. Everybody on the team always has to have headphones and be in a constant communication with the pilots and the mission directors. But even if we do everything right, Surprises are inevitable. Personally, I love flying. There's always some adrenaline before every flight. But during the flight, I'm so busy talking to the pilots, looking at the data, figuring out where we are going to go next, that I often forget about those surprises. Now, if or when they happen, to me it seems like falling off a horse. If you are truly riding, you are bound to fall. Every fall is different, and you learn from every fall. You don't dwell on it afterwards. If you're flying into the storms, you're bound to hit some turbulence, or severe turbulence. But you don't dwell on it afterwards. Now, 15 years after my first field project, I got the best news of my career. The project OTREC, Organization of Tropical Convection, convection over Eastern Pacific, that is being led by Dave Raymond and myself, is getting funded by the American National Science Foundation with $5.4 million. Yeah. Now, the idea of OTREC was born over a beer. At the time, I was a professor at the University of Split. But I would often travel to New Mexico, and in particular to New Mexico Tech, because that, that's where my former advisor Dave Raymond was. And that particular Sunday, you know, Sunday was our day. We would go and do yoga, and after that, we would have beer. And that particular Sunday, I was reminiscing about my life. And I was complaining of being bored a bit, or put, to put it more nicely, 
I was complaining of lack of challenges. And my kids were behaving at the time. Right, no right. Yes, right. And all of a sudden, Dave says, let's do an international field project. And the next couple of hours were spent talking science. By the end of that evening, we had a skeleton of Otrek. And as they say, the rest is history. Now, Otrek aims to sample different stages of storms using a research plane, Gulfstream 5, radar, radio sounds, and over 600 drop sounds. So we'll be flying around these blue boxes. This is our targeted area. We'll perform 20 flights out of Liberia, Costa Rica, and we are going to try to collect the best data set over Eastern Pacific and Southwest Caribbean, the one that will finally tell us why some storms turn into hurricanes and some don't. Now, when I look back to my career and my life, I often wonder how I got this lucky. I have three amazing kids. I'm getting married next Saturday. <laughs> my job is so thrilling as, in my opinion, I am working on one of the greatest puzzles in the world. Now, was it easy to get here where I am today? Or maybe you can judge it for yourself. My department chair, as an undergraduate student, told me that research career is not for me, because I'm a woman. I will get married, and I will have kids. My first child was two months old when I defended my master's thesis. I took him to my first field project when he was eight months old. I had my second child while I was working on my PhD thesis. And I was pregnant with my third child when I defended my PhD thesis. Today, my kids are teenagers, and they all plan on coming to Costa Rica next summer for Otrek. Lucky me. Now, they counted that over the past 18 years, we lived in 15 different houses, some in the US and some in Croatia. When I was moving back to the US a few years ago, Living a pretty successful career and a secure tenure job at Split, everybody told me that I'm nuts. I was moving back to the US alone with three kids, no permanent job lined up. But what is that today? No green card. All I had was a dream a dream for my kids to go to best colleges in the world and the dream called Otrek. And every particle of my body, heart, and soul was screaming, go. And I'm so glad that I listened. I dived into the unknown, trusting that I can make it. And guess what? My son started one of the best colleges in the US this fall, and Otrek got funded with $5.4 million. <laughs> Every challenge that I have ever faced and every no that I have ever heard, and believe me, I've heard plenty, helped me to get where I am today. It helped me to trust myself, to continuously get out of my comfort zone, to be brave, to live, to love, to continuously learn. I learned from the storms, I learned from the hurricanes, I learned from my kids, I learned from life. Thank you very much.